Today on Alvarez TV, we are putting the hi-fi system through its paces. We're wired for sound with DI boxes, mics, speakers, and mic'd up speakers to see how to get the best out of this amazing invention from LR Bags. No feedback. No, f yeah. See, I knew there was something great about this pick. <laughs> what are we doing today, mate? How you doing, mate? Doing good. Yeah. Doing good, doing good. Um, well. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Today is all about these uh, incredible LR Bags Hi-Fi EQs that we have in our guitars in right across the range, right? Masterworks, Laureate, and also in our Diary Masterworks. Correct. We've gone deep. We've gone in. Both feet yeah. in the hi-fi from really just one experience of getting to know it a fair bit. But lovely to be here. We're very wired for sound today. We seriously are wired for Do sound. Do you want to talk us through what we're... So, so basically, we've, we've kind of gone all in to try and demonstrate what's happening, not only from the sound of a directly into the box, but also we're micing up a speaker as well. So we've got microphones on the guitars to sort of demonstrate what the guitars actually sound like if you're in front of the guitars. And then we've got, um, you're plugged into a acoustic DI box and it's directly out of that into a speaker and we're micing up the speaker and then we're also coming out of here into the computer. Quite a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fantastic because I think that's like every way that people will, will mic a guitar up. And yeah. I'm so happy with doing it because Lloyd came out with Hi-Fi and our experience with it, when I've seen it on YouTube, like some people getting the sound out of Hi-Fi, it's like, what? It doesn't quite sound. And, you know, it, we, we were very excited about it because you heard it quite a long time ago. When they had the prototype, I think I mentioned before, I met the JP in Nashville and I plugged it in, mm -hmm. in a Yairi, through uh, one of their Synapse systems, and I thought that's the most natural, flat, no, no sort of um, trickery gro going on EQ in a guitar that I'd personally played. Uh, there's other ones out there that people may think is better, but for me, certainly in our guitars, the, the prototype was fantastic. Yeah. JP turned up a bit late. I gave him the guitar. I said, what do you think of that? 
Mm -hmm. And he went, holy whatever. Mm -hmm. And he thought it was fantastic. And then obviously we put them in everything and I'm looking on YouTube and I'm seeing what the sort of sound that people are getting from this. I'm thinking, what are you doing? It sounds like some dodgy piezo, piezo pickup. When we, when we do this and I, and I listen to it, it's like, I don't know, it sounds fantastic. I, I've been in conversations with people about installation and all that sort of stuff. We, we can get into a bit of installation. Yeah. But I think that from us in this scenario, you wanted to show everything, right? So you've got all of these different, I mean, we've got going through, what is that? Several thousand dollar. Yeah, that's a nice Telefunken. Telefunken TF valve, driven, valve microphone. But yeah. we've also got a very normal speaker with a Shaw SM7 on it. Yeah. Which is very affordable, mm -hmm. common. Um, and the reason why I did that was because I wanted to, because when you plug a guitar in, you're plugging it straight into a mixer or you're plugging it straight into a speaker. Yeah. And it's what you're hearing back from the speaker is kind of, that's that's what you, I wanted to demonstrate that. Yeah. Because DI straight in is never a nice sound. But we know? haven't spent like thousands of dollars on this bit. And this is the mm -hmm. bit that's out in the world. This is the people that are gigging with. Yeah. That setup. Yeah. You know, just a normal speaker. Obviously we're stuck in this, for this, so you can hear it with a thing, but like, What do guitars usually do if you do that? Well, that comes from, the they do, they, we, they will feed back, but it's over volume. True, so right. I know if we crank this right up, yeah. obviously we'd get some feedback. Yeah. But there's also, when I spoke to JP last week, I'd sent him a guitar mm. with a hi-fi in. Mm -hmm. And he said he plugged it in, it was like, oh, sounds terrible. But then all of a sudden he switched to phase Mm -hmm. And he said he was blown away, sound like a microphone. Right. Now, my ears aren't as good as yours and his when it comes to recording stuff. But I could certainly feel very confident in playing a coffee shop gig or whatever it might yeah. be with that sound. And that sound sounds better and more natural than most, if not all, si situations that are... Well, you know... I mean, a bit woofy there. Yeah. But, you know, we've you got this completely flat. Totally so like, flat. There's nothing. And so, it's... So depending on the room, audience, if you're with in an ensemble, yeah. you might want to push the treble a bit. Yeah. So shall we just show that bit? Lisa? Sure, yeah. So, so that phasing. So, Dee, tell us, tell us what, what is okay. phase, Dee. <laughs> so without getting into a hugely scientific explanation, and, and somebody might want to, you know, correct me on stuff like this, but basically, when, it, when a guitar is being amplified, right, the vibrations are being converted into an electrical signal and being sent through to an output device, to a speaker, okay? Yeah. So the guitars, the, the movement of air is going, yeah? yeah? And when sound it's, waves, are they? Sound wave, and when, it's, and when it's going into the speaker, the speaker's putting, it's sending it back in the same direction, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what you end up, what, and this is obviously a great big... Speaker. This in year. itself, it's yeah. a big speaker, right? It's, a, it's, it's creating all of that. That, that, that energy. When the energy comes back from the speaker, it can react with the guitar, and then it kind of amplifies the signal, the, or the bass frequencies, to the point where like it's just uncontrollable. But if you flip the phase, rather than doing that, it's doing that, yeah? So, so it's working with the guitar? It's kind of the- Are the, 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 the two sets of frequencies are working together? The, the frequency of the guitar is opposed to the one that's coming out of the speaker, but, the problem there, of course, is that you can lose a lot of bottom end. So there's two ways to kind of attack it, right? Mm -hmm. You either listen to the frequency and go right, and you can notch out the problematic frequency. It tends to be somewhere between 100 hertz and 250 hertz. It's very, very low, mm -hmm. low mid, bassy, kind mm -hmm. of low mid frequencies. You can notch that out, and if that kind of doesn't work, then you can flip the phase. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just flipping the phase... I'll sort it out but sometimes it can destroy the sound, you know? Okay, so, so let's just, I'm gonna take this so microphone out of the way. So we're, 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 in, we're in phase, right? And I'm just gonna, there's a button, there's a button on here which says invert, which is gonna flip the, the signal, okay? That sounds, like more 
Lord Lord me. Out. That, that's in phase. In phase. Yeah. And now out of phase. Which one do you prefer? There's a nice bit about the ball. It's like almost a bit more warm than here, but it's a bit woolly. Yeah. You hear that? That's happening. Yeah. That's from there. Clear up. Now, the other way of doing this, right? Let's put it back in phase. Now there's a... There's a little, and this this is the LR Bags acoustic DI, right? So this this actually has some preset frequencies in here, and I think I looked on the pamphlet before, and I think this one here where it says B is somewhere in that range that I was talking about, 100 to 200 and something hertz. And then we can, and, and then we can notch it out. We can pull out that frequency just in that okay. in that band, right? So if you start, if you strum again, that's right out. That's, lose, that's losing some body. But I tell you, as, as I'm strumming, it feels safe, like you know it's not gonna yeah, that's true. be too much. It's not gonna. Yeah, it's, let's, do, let's do a little experiment, right? I'm gonna turn the volume right up so that the speaker's reacting with the guitar. And let's leave it, let's leave it out of phase. Out of phase. And then if you just, just strum a chord. was the face button like that <laughs> <laughs> so it, it immediately fixes Hold the on. problem it was out of phase and you put it in or no, it was no, in it phase was in you put phase it... i put it out of phase so all that goes when you reverse the when you reverse the the, the phase of the signal i like that so that's what your phase button is doing yeah and some of the other eqs have got a button actually on the guitar but these but these don't you'd have to use something like this to yeah. fix that or you're notching out. Let's 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 try, let's try notching it out. Let's let's hit a chord. I'm going to increase the volume. Yeah. So we get feedback. Yeah. And then I'll try and notch it out and see if that works. Right. So, so you're going to reduce so, a certain frequency. Yes. So the guitar's in. So this is in phase. Mm -hmm. So that was good before. And I'm going to try and notch it out. Notch it. Notch it out and see if it works. Okay. So let's. doesn't really work. You need a notch. You need, no, you so need, you need a phase. You need a, you need a phase, phase, phase. You look, it's horses for courses, right? If you're playing in a band, you're playing in a church, or, you're, or, or wherever, wherever you are, and you are amongst other musicians, bass players, keyboard players, you know, whole bass drums, stuff happening, all that energy in the low mid is a nightmare, right? Yeah. yeah. And this is only, and what's going to happen is, you're gonna that guitar is gonna be lost, you know, in the mix, or you're just gonna create more cacophony of kind of noise in the low end. Yeah, it's a good one. So you you want to knock all the bottom end out of it anyway. So just yeah. just, just just do me a little favor, just strum for me. But the guitar doesn't sound as nice as <clears throat> I know. Is that because you? Well, the thing is, if you're in a band though. Oh, you've taken the you, trouble. You're gonna be. You're gonna be. No, I haven't. Have I've not? taken the bass out. out. So yeah. it's always better to cut than boost. Okay, so what you're saying is single or a duo, coffee shop style, you know, the guitar nice and warm, all sure, the frequency in there. Sure, sure. You throw drums, bass, etc., into the mix. You're going to cut out that lower mid. Yeah. Which doesn't sound great, but it's going to cut through. But when you're strumming. I wouldn't want that. Yeah. I would, exactly. I'd Horses rather not. Courses, right? yeah, I'd rather <laughs> not be heard than <laughs> be heard badly. <laughs> so basically, what we're saying is we. Love hi-fi. We think Lloyd nailed it. Use a DI box and you've got all control with EQs and you've got your phase button, which obviously is super important. Especially. Yeah. But the thing is, I mean, depending on how loud you need to get it, and obviously there's on-stage sounds as well if you've got, you know, monitor system going on or mm -hmm. in-ears, in I guess, is even a different kettle of fish, Just right? better. Just better. Yeah. 
So because it's the relationship between. At least with the box, you've got some control. You're not yeah. going straight into an amp or a speaker. One thing we haven't got set up here is directly into an amp. You know, we could be going directly into a um, mm -hmm. like a Fishman yeah. box or something or whatever. Yeah. So I mean, we're, we're kind of simulating that really by, si by, by simulating doing a little that. bit. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's it's very similar. We're going to do some more. JP's also making a video on here oh, as well. Yeah, so oh, cool. To I can see studio, that. So that'd be cool. So uh, just to talk a little bit about Hi Five for those who, obviously, we've mentioned it before. Here it is in all its glory. Um, and it's a transducer system. There's two transducer pickups on the bridge plate. And they're housed, beautifully finished, with a little LR Bags logo. I like that. Mm -hmm. And Lloyd tells me these are floating, so the pickups inside. Yeah, I... And not touching the top. You know, just through R&D, they found if it wasn't touching the top, they were getting a clearer, more hi-fi hi sound. And is it taped rather than glued? I think I read that as yeah, well. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a 3M. Is it 3M? Uh-huh. So, so little, little, um, little pads on there, which will stay on forever. And it's important to say that there isn't an under... The, 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 the sort of older style pickups would have a kind of a strip right under the... Uh, under the saddle. Under the saddle. I mean, PA saw, yeah. so just... I mean, obviously, we use the element in the uh, Stage Pro, and the element's a clean sounding, sounding saddle pickup. But, you know, you, you go up in price as well, which yeah, is obviously a consideration. Um, and he's got a studio-grade preamp. So this is powered, where um, something like K&K &K isn't powered. Yeah. And again, adding to that hi-fi, so you get a broader sort of sweep. You've got lots of more sort of dynamic range going on, which probably comes from it being powered. We do something different. We install them differently. We actually have our own hi-fis made, which have much shorter wires. And we spin these the other way. When it first came out, it was like, because you obviously if this was cut with, with bridge pins, you've got bridge pins coming through here. Yeah. You don't want the wires hitting the pins and you don't want loose wires. So basically we shortened the wires. We turned these around. We asked LR bags, does it make a difference if we spin them? They mm -hmm. said, absolutely not. So we've got a nice tidy system going on so that the wires don't touch the top or the back or the pins. And it was actually one of the guys at the factory said, why don't you just turn them the other way around and then we don't have to deal with the wires. And I said, that's a good question. Let me ask them <laughs> if we can do that. So that's our system. It's very tidy. It's and, very nice. Uh, and nice and neat. It's nice and neat. And as I said, we're a big fan. So all Laureate, Masterworks, and Yairi uh, Electric Acoustics have the hi-fi system. But please let us know how you set up, how you have found the system. We love it. And I think it, in, in all the ways, these, are you going to do more playing and just I'll like... I'll do some more playing, yeah. So and we'll I'd be interested like, to know what people are using it for, you know? Are, are, are they plugging straight into a PA? Are they, are they recording with it? Well, yeah, exactly, you know? yeah. I mean, how... Or like a blend or something. I was thinking about doing a little blend. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's something that so, a lot of people do, you know? So we'll do mic, yeah. DI into computer, yes. speaker, mm -hmm. and a blend of... A blend of probably mic this and microphone and the DI. Okay, yeah. That would make sense. Yeah, like a 50-50 or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, brilliant. Mm. We'll get nice. making that, and then at least you can hear everything. We'll we'll cut in between, and you can make your own mind up which sounds best. Obviously, this is going to sound the best. Yeah. But well, I mean, it's, it's in context because it's a you know when you listen to a guitar, we're listening to the guitar from the from the audience perspective. Yeah. When you listen to a guitar from a you know from from, from an EQ system, yeah. it's listening. It's like it's like having being inside the guitar box. And you can't put a mini you know? one of those in here because it's just. A nightmare. Well, I think that's the next stage, isn't it? Well, Lloyd is coming out with something which does have a. I uh, mean, the Anthem system had a had a. It did have a have a true mic. He's, he called it, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And this one, he's coming out with the um, is it called a duet? Duet, which does have a mic that sits in between the two. Yeah, and I actually asked Lloyd about this when we saw him at Nam, and he was telling me, hmm. and it was there was some there was some trickery, some magic going on where. I think he's kind of flipped the phase of, of, of the microphone, so it feels as if the microphone's mic'ing from the top rather than underneath. I, I really don't know how he's done that. It was quite, uh, quite remarkable. We'll get a duet on in a few months or yeah. something. We'll, yeah. we'll do that as well. But anyway, that's our hi-fi. Hope you enjoyed the show. Great stuff. Let us know how you're using yours. Nice one. Cheers. Cheers, Bye -bye. guys. See ya.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. If you want to watch more videos like this one, click the video on the screen now.